Welcome to the sh oh, start over. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you could. Ready? Welcome to the author show and its first showcase on Bremerton Kitsap Access Television. I'm your host, Ingemar Anderson, and in each show, we will conduct interviews with local authors, present examples of local books by members of our community, and we are going to present other subjects related to publishing. In this first episode, we will be interviewing Dan Whedon. Dan Whedon is a business growth consultant. He has innovative ideas on helping entrepreneurs and business owners grow, develop, and protect their businesses and people. He is also an award-winning speaker and member of the Million Dollar Consulting Hall of Fame. Welcome, Dan Whedon. Happy to be here. Thanks, Ingemar. You're welcome. Today, we will be speaking about Dan's latest book entitled Unleashed Leadership. The book has been published and is available since, 19, since 2015. And uh, Dan, my first question I have for you is, and it's only one question so far. Oh, good. I, I, I'm good at answering one at a time. Yeah. yeah. I plan to ask you two questions, but <laughs> we we'll start with the first one. Okay. What inspired you to write Unleashed Leadership? What inspired me to write Unleashed Leadership? Well, as Ingemar mentioned in the beginning, I am a consultant. And what I realized is, is that I, I do a lot of writing because that's how I get the word out about my strategies, my, my concepts, my tactics. And as I did more writing, I realized, you know, I should write a book. And so that was really the impetus, is I wanted to be able to put something into writing as part of intellectual property for my business. And a book was the ideal way to do it. So I, I think really the inspiration was, is I wanted to be able to compile my thinking, my thoughts, and, and my strategies into a book form that I could give to business owners and entrepreneurs to use. Great. You know, this actually leads me to a second question that just came to my head oh, while you were answering. Um, do you think it's a good exercise for a person to write, especially business people, uh, to write a subject down? What, what, is the, what, what did you get out of that exercise to write things, as you said, in a book form? Uh, is there something, is there a learning process or how do you value that experience in itself? Well, I think, I think there is a learning process. Prior to writing the book, I was writing a lot of blogs. I have a, a, a column in the Kitsap Sun, Kitsap Business Journal, a monthly column since 2010, and I realized I'd written <laughs> hundreds of thousands of words, but they were a mishmash. And so to be able to take your concepts and your topics and string them together in a book format, chapter by chapter, that's a harder thing to do. And, and in fact, as, I, as we were going through the process, you may remember this, uh, with our editor, I told her probably the most important thing you can do is make sure that I'm not repeating the same story three or four times. Because when I'm writing it, I don't remember what I wrote three, four weeks ago. And so there, the learning process is to be really take and become structured and have a plan very similar to running a business. Well, that's a great answer uh, because you highlighted nearly as a process to get to, you know, to, to becoming a good writer. Not everybody is a writer from the start. There are some talents that are, but writing is just like any other profession that you have to learn. And I think this is a good takeaway uh, for any person who wants to write or has a business and thinks about writing a book about their business. Uh, so great. I do have... Uh, one question that I was thinking about, uh, specifically for your book, uh, every author has a different goal with their book. Right. And uh, why? What was what was your goal? What did you want to achieve with your book? Well, my book might be a little bit different than many other authors whose goal it is is to sell books. Now, certainly, I want to sell books, but in reality, I, I probably give away as many books as I actually sell. Because my goal is to get the books in the hands of business owners, to have them read it, and to have them give me a call and say, you know, we need to talk. Because something in your book you wrote resonated with me. And I can't tell you how many times I've given a book to somebody, and then we've had a meeting, 
and they bring their, the book with them, and I noticed that they have, it just happened the other day, highlighted several areas. Right. And that's what I want. I want them to be able to see things in that book that would work well in their business, and then because I'm a consultant, I'd like to be able to work with them. So really, if you, if you think of it in those terms, it's a lost leader for me. It's an opportunity to get my work in front of people so that they know how I, how I can help them, and then hopefully we'll be able to do business together. Do you think that would be a good idea for any business or just for the consulting business? No, I think, I think any business uh, can benefit from writing a book. But ten, it, it'll depend on the industry a mm -hmm. little bit, and it'll depend on the reason you're, you're writing that book. Uh, probably for services, it, it's, it's more than, than products. You know, products might be a tough one unless mm -hmm. you're, you're writing about how to put the product together, mm -hmm. uh, which I have trouble with with instructions. But for <laughs> services, yeah. so whether you're a real estate agent, an insurance agent, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you're an attorney or a, or a CPA, consultants, speakers, coaches, people like that that extend services, the ability to get your smarts. Mm -hmm. You know, the intellectual capital mm -hmm. that you have, and you can manifest it into a book, mm -hmm. which then becomes your intellectual property. To be able to put that into that format, give it to somebody, and say, read this, take, listen, you know, tell us, tell me what you think about it. Then you have a way to really broadcast widely what it is that you do and how it is you can help them. Because that's really, in the end, what we're trying to do. Right, help them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think this, this brought, you brought up this point I never thought about is you're right. It's actually really for s all service companies could benefit. Product Certainly. companies who create products, you're right. That's actually a, a different, that wouldn't, you know, a, a book wouldn't really be so efficient. But anybody who has a service company, yeah. so for, for that's instance, interesting. For instance, I have, I, uh, and you know this because you were one of our guests, I'm co-host of a, a nationally syndicated podcast called The Shrimp Tank. And Brad Berger is my co-host. Well, Brad is a wealth manager, and he wrote a book. Mm -hmm. And he wrote yeah. a book about wealth management mm -hmm. for the very same purpose, is that he's getting his ideas, his thoughts out there. Somebody's going to read it and, and like that. Uh, very similar to you. you. You're a publisher. You have a service that you offer. You write a book about how important it is to publish. Same type of a thing. So I think anybody that has a service mm -hmm. can write a book. Mm -hmm. And that, that it would be valuable for them. As a publisher, I would say should write a book. Should write a book. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, should write it through Kitsap Publishing. Exactly. Um, so we talked about your profession and how do you... So let's get a little bit more to the, uh, you know, to the nitty-gritty. In your we profession... We weren't in the nitty-gritty yet? Well... That wasn't oh, the nitty-gritty? Oh, boy. It, okay, now it's coming. All right. Ball. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, it, it is already a, a good start, but... <laughs> what they're I mean publishing in itself is is a very complex process really you know as sure. we did is now for two and a half years and uh, you know on the surface you see the book you, you might you're welcome to you know use your book and show it we will show the book also okay uh, the audience of All course right. but you know publishing is a very long process when you think about it from the manuscript from the idea right. put it on paper or on the computer and then we format it and so nitty-gritty I meant like uh, you know, you came to me with a proposal, a book proposal, right? And uh, that goes already pretty much in a more detailed area, especially for the marketing part. And uh, I, I, I did want to ask you a little bit mm -hmm. about the marketing part. Uh, so, in, you laid out how you want to, you know, get, get the book out there, and you use it in your speaking engagements. You Correct. use it when you consult. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about how exactly you're doing this? So you have like speaking engagements and then you bring the book in uh, with you or, or it's part of the, sure. I'd be the, happy to the, talk the fee about that. that people pay? Yeah, that would no, be great. No, no. I bring, so I do a lot of speaking and uh, I do that as part of my marketing and I bring my book with me. So if I'm in a, in, a, in a place where I'm speaking and maybe there's 100 people, maybe there's 200, maybe there's 1,000, I'll bring books with me to have available for people to purchase because I'm going to talk about concepts in the book in my speech. And I'd like, and that's part of the reason I wrote a book is, is that afterwards somebody comes and says, boy, I, I didn't write all the notes down. Well, I have a book. 
And so I, I make the book available. Oftentimes I'll make it, a, you know, if it's a, a large group, I may give a discount for people buying it right, right then and there. But that's one of the ways that I can, I can use the book as, uh, as, as part of the total marketing when I'm speaking. I also have the book available on my website. Uh, I, I give the book to many people. I will also ask them to review the book. And so you can go onto Amazon and you can see the reviews of the book. Social media platforms, I use Facebook, I use LinkedIn, I use Twitter, I use Google+, I use Instagram, Pinterest. I use all of those to, to advertise the book. And, and when somebody is kind enough to give me a review, if it's a good review, <laughs> if it's a good review, hopefully they, they're mostly good, if it's a review, then, then I'll, I'll put it out on my blog as well. And I'll, I'll put it under rave reviews. And, and, and so that way people get an idea. Hey, somebody read this, somebody other than the author, and they had something good to say about it. I'm going to check it out a little bit more. I looked on your Amazon page. Of course I do because we've listed the book there. And yeah. you have about 30 reviews or more on your book. And all are five stars, something probably like that. Probably all my family. What do you do it's all probably, with? <laughs> probably all my family. What do you do with that. all the bad reviews? Uh, well, since there's none, I, I <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the bad reviews go to Captain Jack. Right, that's, who's yeah, that? Ca Captain Jack is my Jack Russell Terrier. He's also my co-author. Uh, he writes a small anecdote at the end of, of every chapter. Is he in uh, the book he, here? He's in the book. Right, yeah. on the yeah, picture. He's, he's on the we back. Show it. Can I show that? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to show it. Captain Jack is is right there. He's the good looking one. Right there, Captain Jack. And uh, so he, he gets the bad reviews. And he does one of three things with it. He'll either, he'll either urinate on it, play with it, or eat it. And so any one of those three could actually happen. There we I'm go. just kidding. He does. I, <laughs> we don't let him do that in the house. Just kidding. But uh, you know, Captain Jack is, is a writer and and I've, he's gotten good reviews, and people have told me that he's better than me, and, I've, and that he deserves a raise. And so what I've told them is that he gets free food, free rent, and free health care for life. And so he's got a pretty good deal. So he's a very important part he's of it. Well, he's actually part of it. I, I joke a lot about Captain Jack, but that's the whole concept of Unleashed. You can see the fence there, the whole concept of being unleashed and unleashing your potential. Because Captain Jack, if he gets unleashed, he has, he has no qualms in going out and creating his own adventures and, and unleashing his potential. And I think entrep entrepreneurs and business owners should do the same. So he was actually uh, the inspiration for the concept around Unleashed. Right. I like that concept a lot. The first time I read your uh, manuscript and your, your book proposal, I, I love the idea because it's a metaphor that you can apply to, and I like that idea to be unleashed. This book is, by the way, very, very good, well written. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, I got very good reviews okay. just personally as well. Oh, good, thank so, you. So, yeah, I, let's see what other questions we could ask yeah. you, which are totally off the, you know, not in, in like in the, in the flow now, but uh, random, what is the best way to market your books? You talked about it, the Twitter. And, uh, well, you know, what's the best way to mar market my book? Your book, yeah. But there are many ways to market mm -hmm, any book, mm -hmm. and social media makes it makes it easy mm -hmm. and easier than ever. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the important parts about having a cover, having a cover that is attractive and early and early in the very process. early in the process. And I, you know, I'm trying to remember when when we had the cover in our process. I'm not sure if I recall. But having it early in the process is, is really important because just like how people buy wine, they look at the, the, mm -hmm. the wine mm -hmm. label, uh, people will often be attracted to a book to mm -hmm. at least look underneath the, the hood, so mm -hmm. to speak, based on the cover. Yep. Yeah, the cover is one thing as a publisher. That's our uh, you know, first big concern. Right. We want to make this right. A cover, when, when it's a make or, uh, you know, make or break deal. But anybody, anybody who is, is, wants to market a book, mm -hmm. social media is a really important way. I think Pinterest is an up-and-coming way. I've spoken to, uh, to people who are bookstore owners, mm -hmm. and, and they sell a lot on Pinterest. Wow. And, and so that, I found that to be interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... What, are, what kind of research did you start, did you do when you wrote your book? I guess, you know, I started writing my own book years ago, and I, 
I started to do research on the topics that I was writing and I found like you can get lost in this whole process, just finding the right things and put it together. Was that a difficult task? No, because I didn't, <laughs> the research is all here. Mm -hmm. These are all my concepts, mm -hmm. my topics. And so uh, it really didn't for me, I, there, there wasn't a lot of research involved. What I will say is that the, the little bit of research that was done was by the editor. She did a fantastic job, right? Okay, and and so she was a huge help for me because mm -hmm. I'm not a researcher, and so there were some things that I had written about that mm -hmm. required research, and so I would say this got a great editor, because that editor will went the extra mile, and she corrected me on some of the things that that were not necessarily completely correct or not you know a little bit inaccurate, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, and so we we took care of that, and so that's an important part, but because this is my intellectual capital, I didn't really have to do a lot of research yeah, on it. Right. Yeah, you're a consultant, I guess. Right. That's right. It's all you're learning all these decades and years mm -hmm. before that come together. In yeah, book. most of the research was just kind of telling stories, mm -hmm. historical stories, right. or, or right. giving anecdotes about mm -hmm. other things that, that uh, she would just make sure and, and then footnote in there to, to show, show proof of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many hours a day do you write? Did you write when you wrote that book? Uh, you know, that, it's a discipline. Just like anything mm -hmm. else, it's a right. discipline. Right. And what worked best for me was an hour and a half every other day. An hour and a half mm -hmm. every other day. I would, I would just put it on my calendar. Mm -hmm. And because I am a morning person, I'm, I'm most creative in the morning, that's when I chose to write, and I would just pick the same time. Uh, I'd usually start about 8, I'd go 8.30 to 10 on the days I was writing. It's when I had the most energy. It's when I was thinking the best. If I tried to write it in the afternoon, it probably there's probably nothing afternoon related in there because I'm just not very good there. So for me, I, I realized, okay, this is when I'm most creative, when I have the most energy, and that's when I'm going to write. Well, we talked about editing and writing. A question would be here, it's kind of a fun question, is there anything not in the book that you took out in the editing process which you thought, well, let's think about that? Or, you know, because you wrote, mostly, you know, when you write, I, when I wrote, I wrote a lot and then I took only sections. And were there things that you thought you that don't want to That hit the include? cutting room floor? Uh-huh. No, I, I can't think of any. Uh, and in fact, the editing process was really cool. We had a, uh, Bethany and I had a great relationship where uh, I actually, the way we worked it out is, I, I ended up sending her chapter by chapter when it was done, but I said, I don't want to see it until the very end. Mm -hmm. I did not want to become distracted by what I'd written before. And so when I was done with the book, she would send me chapter by chapter and we would go through it. And we would, you know, most of our discussions were around grammar <laughs> and, and, and making sure that the grammar was right. And in some cases we, and, and actually it was funny, in some cases we went, we went with the non-grammar to deal with the alliteration because it was, there's an art and a science to this. But there was no, there were no stories or, or anything that I wish I had in there that was left off. It really came down to the structure, the grammar, uh, you know, a lot of times I would, I would use pronouns when I should have been using the actual name or, or let's like say of the person because she would say, well, who is he? Who are they? And so it was like, okay, that's right. I'm in, I got to get out of my own head. So the editing part was really more, a, more about structure. Right. Yeah. The readability. It's correct. And the flow too. So editing is much more than just looking at commas and, and look, the reality and, uh, is, and I'll tell, I'll tell this to anybody. Uh, if don't make the mistake of not editing. Very good. Yeah. Uh, don't make the mistake of having somebody who is not a professional editor do it. So if your spouse or, or, or uh, best friend says they're an editor, uh, great, but don't have them edit your book. And or have them edit it, but then have somebody else also edit it. Well, how, this is how it went. I just, if, mm -hmm. if we're on editing, I had, I had Bethany edit. We went through three rounds of editing. Wow. And then my daughter, who uh, has a master's degree mm -hmm. in in uh, nursing, so she's a, a smart cookie. She mm -hmm. she had just gotten home from school, and so she had a little extra time on her hands. So she read through it after that, just being a reader, not being an editor, being a reader. And she caught a couple things. Mm -hmm. I had, and so, and those are just misspellings. After the point, we went through three rounds, and I read it once, and she read it twice. It's like we're done. You can't have it. There's not going to be a perfect book out there. 
the, but it's going to be just about as close. You, you can you can go really crazy in the details. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so uh, my both actually both daughters were very helpful mm -hmm. in just reading it. My wife was helpful, but that all came after the editing that dealt with grammar and language. This was more about readability. Mm -hmm. This was more about catching in a misspelled word that got bias. That was really all it was. Cool. Mm -hmm. Do you Google yourself? Uh, is it? That's, that's, a a, that's a really kind of a strange question to ask me. It's Ingemar. a personal I, question. It's a very personal as question. Author, as author, not as whatever. You know author. what? Do I Google myself? Yes, but not because of as an author. I, I constantly, not constantly, I, I have Google Analytics and probably once a month I will Google myself because I want to see what comes up first. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in it from a consulting and, and a marketing standpoint, what shows up first. That's really the only reason I do it. But I do have Google Analytics, and that mm -hmm. keeps, keeps me in touch with The others. question is really, uh, I think it's an important question as author to know how they appear in public or even on the computer and on the internet. Right. If, <clears throat> if, if you find a new book and you want to read about, you know, want to read the book, uh, my experience is many readers, potential readers, they research first a little bit about the person you know they're very critical sometimes they're impulse buys you know they just buy a book they see it in the shelf but I, I I think the appearance on on the internet online is very important for every author actually actually I I know that it's very important so you want to google yourself it's, it was a personal question well I know, no I was but, just joking well, you know you want to google yourself because you want to see if your name is coming yeah, up and your book and, with, and, with and your everything. book but I, I would I would caution this, mm -hmm. and that's not to be too thin skinned. Mm -hmm. You know, not not everybody is going to like your book. That's not true. every you know not everybody, and and, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I know I have all the right. five star people, and that's uh -huh. that's all great. But um, I'm sure there's people out there who said I I don't agree with this, or I don't think this is very well written, and that's okay. It's really it's it's really not about the standing ovation. It's about can you put this in the book, this, this book in the hands of people who it can help. And if it only helps 10% of the people who read it, okay, mm -hmm. that's 10% more than, than would have been. So I think it's really important for authors not to get so protective uh, and, and serious about what people say because in social media that can happen. We see it in, in all the yeah. time. Yep. And uh, you, you, you can drive yourself crazy mm -hmm. if you're trying to please everybody. And that's the last thing an author should do. In fact, I would say this. An author should poke the bear a little bit. You know what poking the bear is? Provoke people? Very, yes, right. right. Provoke. I didn't know if, if that, that well, translated over to... But yeah, you, you want yeah. to be... You, you want to provoke in a positive way. You want to make people mm -hmm. think. Right. Uh, I think it's really important to be contrarian in some places to be able to get to get some because listen if if it's if it's not it becomes boring it has to be news it has to be something that's engaging yes and engaging is actually a magical word for a publisher yeah. but uh, going back to the original question you know sure. when you google yourself that's just a f you know first thing to look you know Am I appearing? Is my am, book yeah. appearing? Am I how showing you deal, up? How you deal with negative response or positive response? That's the next question I actually had. Okay. Was like, how do you deal with negative with negative feedback? But you already did, which is exactly how an author should think with <clears throat> with feedback. You know, it's about the book and it's about it's how you can help people. I think I think it's important to look at negative feedback and take a look at it for what it is. Mm -hmm. exactly. If all of a sudden I had a, a trend of people saying that this was, it wasn't about the content, but it was about the grammar. You should take action. Well, right? all of a sudden we may have a problem yep. in the editing mm -hmm. because that's, that's no exactly. good. You, right. should be, you should be diligent on yep. that, yet your content is your content. You have to stand to it. You have to right. stand to it, and so you shouldn't take it too seriously. Right. You should use Google and any other search engine optimization just to make sure that you're out there. Right. Now, exactly. I don't have a common name. Dan Whedon is not a common name. That's right. Uh, some, some, some other folks may have more of a common name, and that becomes even more important to make sure that uh, all whatever little crawlers go through the Internet is getting your book out there. So I'm lucky in that regard. What was an early experience where you, had, where you learned that language had power? Wow. 
an early experience where I didn't learn language. I, you know, I got one. I've got one. I was probably, uh, <laughs> I was probably 10, 11 years old. Wow. And I had a, a good friend. I'll just, I won't give his whole name. His name was Alex. <laughs> name is Alex still, but but it, we, we were we were we were probably 10, 11 years old, and he was a uh, he he played we all played football, but he was very good. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we had this thing to go out and sell candy bars and and go door to door. And uh, he was very nervous about doing it. And so I said, I'll go with you. And so I did all the talking. And he just stood there, and and people bought candy from him. I don't know if this is a sales thing, but I, what I learned is is that the language is important. So if you're going to sell candy, you don't just knock on the door and say, "Hey, you want some candy?" You got to give a story. And so I made up all of these things about Alex being the next Franco Harris and, and 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 things like that. And and people either thought I was cute or they wanted me to get out of the way, but they they bought stuff from him. So you learn that you have to be engaging, you have to be a storyteller, you have to, uh, and I didn't think of that all back then, but I know it now, but you have to get people interested mm -hmm. in you or else they're going to shut the door in your face or shut the door on your book right. and, and be gone. So language controls so much of not only the business world but our professional life as well. Yep. We have two more questions. Okay. Um, one easy one. You one are easy working. And one hard. Yep. Okay. The last one is hard. Okay. I'll take the easy one first. Easy first. Sure. Okay. You're working on another book, right now. Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. I don't have another full book like this. It takes a lot of work. Uh, to write a book like this takes a lot of work, mm -hmm. and it, and in so doing, it takes away time from the other marketing that I do as a consultant. Mm -hmm. And and this book is still pretty new, and I'm still getting it in the hands of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I think this this book has more mileage on it. Uh, when the time comes that I'm a year away from thinking it doesn't, mm -hmm. uh, then I'll do another one. What I am looking at doing is is I have a, a weekly newsletter. It's called Extra Points. You can go to my website at danweeden.com and sign up for extra points. And it's a, just a short weekly missive. Well, I'm nearing 400 of those. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together a, a, a small compilation book of the 101 of the best of those. And it'll be something that a, a business owner or entrep entrepreneur can read daily. And, and have 101 of those. And so uh, it's still my work, it's still my writing, but it won't be as structured. And it's already written, so I really just have to now go figure out. So I'll have my daughters uh, and my wife and Captain Jack and Bella the dogs go through, pick out the best 101, and we'll put them out there. That's cool. This is always good. It's almost like a how-to. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, it, it's more of a daily type thing. Right. So with the last question, what do you do if you don't do book writing and all that? Do you think you do a lot of things beside like rotary you have oh you mean outside work, of outside of my outside business, of your business. Oh, i am i am a rotarian uh, i've been in rotary for almost 24 years i'm mm -hmm. i'm a member of the paulsbo uh, club and i'm a, a past president there i do a lot of golfing or i'd like to do more golfing if the weather was a little bit nicer but uh, I, I like to golf i like to read believe it or not uh, i like to watch tv i'm a tv watcher i'm i'm now uh, watching, we're, we're binge watching the Sherlock movies on uh, on Netflix. So I like Ooh. to watch TV, uh -huh. and you know what? I just like to hang out with my wife. Uh, we've been married over thirty years, and and like to hang out with her and the dogs, and and uh, just have fun. Great. Well, Dan, thank you so much. My pleasure. This was a very interesting discussion. I hope the 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 audience learned or was engaged and f find you know like maybe some treasures in our discussion. Which just I one. We just need one. At right? least one. That's right. So with this, I'd like to say thank you to Dan Whedon and also the pleasure. entire crew uh, here at Public Access Television for their support. I hope you have enjoyed our show today and. Uh, that you encourage your it encouraged you to learn more about the publishing process and uh, the opportunities you have, uh, and maybe it inspired you really to write your own uh, book and come to publish it. And with that, I wish you all a good rest of the day, and I hope we will see you soon back here at our next the author show.